including more for the Praise the Lord. We're going to get straight into it. I mean, it's now Easter time, and it's no coincidence because as a Christian, I do not believe in coincidences, but it's the Lord's doing. It's now Easter time, and the lesson we've landed on is foot washing and the Lord's Supper. What an amazing thing. The Lord Jesus Christ is in charge. Anyway, let's get straight into it. This, this subject is going to cover about the, the Lord's Supper. Um, the way the Lord ordained it, uh, the purpose of the Lord's Supper, and how the Lord actually instructed us in connection with the way it should actually be carried out in its season. Praise the name of the Lord. Quite ironically, many churches have the Lord's Supper, some have it on a weekly basis. Every single week they have the Lord's Supper. Um, communion, every single week they have it. But And then some have it once every three months, some have it once every six months, some have it once a year. In fact, and some don't take it at all. Yeah. But we want to get to the bottom of it and say, well, what does the Lord actually say in connection with his supper? Let's follow away, praise the name of the okay, Lord. Thank you. Question number one, are there certain ordinances that we should observe? First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Now, all quotes are taken from the King James Version of your Bible. Now, First Corinthians 11, 1 and 2 states, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. So the question was, are there certain ordinances that we should observe? And in line with the scripture, it's a definite yes. Because in actuality, Paul says, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. He's instructing the church here. Let's continue on. Thank you. Question number two. What new ordinance did Jesus institute when he was on earth? St. John chapter 13 verses 4 and 5. That's St. John chapter 13 verses 4 and 5. And it reads quote as follows. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he, wherewith he was girded. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's continue. Praise the Lord. Question number three. What indicates that this new ordinance has a spiritual significance? St. John chapter 13, verses 7, 8, and 12. And it reads as follows. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. He riseth, verse 12, He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments, and took a towel and girded himself. So we can see here, the Lord Jesus instructs Peter. Peter said, Lord, you'll never wash my feet. But Jesus said, if, you, if Peter, if, if, if I do not wash your feet, you have no part or lot with me. So here we see the Lord bringing in or announcing the arrival of a new ordinance, which is the Lord's Supper and foot washing, the ceremony of foot washing. This foot washing ceremony serves many purposes. It reminds us of our baptism, that we are washed of our sins, that we are cleansed of our sins, that we are dead to sins and raised up in newness of life. Um, foot washing is almost like the renewal of the covenant of baptism. That's what it is. It's all, and, and then of course the Lord's Supper is in, remembrance, is in remembrance of Jesus Christ's death, sacrifice, death and resurrection. So Jesus said in order to be part and to partake in my kingdom, you have to carry out, you have to do, you need, must carry out and do this ordinance to be part of the body of Christ. So continue on. So just verse 12 um, of question number 3. Yes, yeah, so after he had washed their feet and taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. 
praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Just go back there again, you know. Go back to that place. You run away too soon sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you eat a good meal, you drag the meal away before it's been eaten. He said, then Jesus said, ye call me master and Lord, and ye say, well, for so I am. He said, I am master and I am Lord. If yeah. I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Oh, glory be to God. He said, he said if, if I then, your Lord and Master, meaning God Almighty, have washed your feet. Oh, glory be to God, the creator of heaven, of the heavens and the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God, washing the feet of the created. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet. Come on now, somebody. Come on now, get with it. Ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Oh, come on now. For I've given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Oh, come with me now. Let's continue on. <laughs> Let's continue. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Question number four. Why did Jesus set us this example? And I think it's all, it's all, and, and, so we can also look at St. John uh, 13 and verses 17. He said, 16 and 17, he said, Verily, verily, I... Sorry, can you ask the question again, please? I didn't quite hear it. Why did Jesus set us this example? Verse 16, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye do these things, happy are ye if ye do them, because it will bring you peace. It will bring you peace of mind. It will bring you joy to drink. It. it brings the blessing of God to your life. Jesus is showing us that humility actually brings the blessing of God on our, on our lives. Jesus is showing us that humility actually brings the blessing of God on our lives. So we'll be happy if we do it. Continue on. Thank you. Question number five. What is the meaning of this ordinance? St. John 13. Uh, I'll pray to the name of the Lord. Let's go. I'm going to go to Hallelujah. First Peter five five. You good time there? First Peter five five. What is the meaning of this ordinance? First Peter five and verse five. Hallelujah. Oh glory be to God. Somebody say Amen. Somebody amen. say Amen. He said, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, unto the older person. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth, come on now, the proud, and giveth grace unto the humble. So the question was, What is the meaning of this ordinance? To teach us humility. Also turn again to 1 Timothy 5.10. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I'm in this spirit now. 1 Timothy First Timothy 5 and verse 10. Oh, hallelujah! Jesus said, For we two or three, hallelujah, are gathered together in my name, hallelujah, there am I in the midst of them. And I can tell you, Jesus Christ is in this studio now. First, First Timothy 5 verse 10. It says, hallelujah, oh glory be to God. Well, praise the name of God, it said it here. Hallelujah. First Timothy 5 verse 10. It says, well reported of for good work. So foot washing is a good work. If she have brought up children, if she had lodged, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she has have relieved the afflicted, if she had diligently followed every good work. It teaches us humility yes, yes, and to yes. serve, to be in the service of others. Come on with me now, somebody. Because you know, Jesus Christ has called us not into self-service. Come on now. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. Not into, into self-service, but Jesus Christ has called us to serve others. Come on, say amen. Wonderful. Come on, let's Wonderful. move on. Let's move on. Uh, Hallelujah. Question number six. Yes. What ordinance did Paul receive from the Lord and pass on to the church? First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Hallelujah, come on now. And verses 23 to 26. So the question was, what ordinance did Paul receive from the Lord 
and pass on to the church. So 1 Corinthians 11, 1 and 2 reads as follows. Paul said, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Come on now. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. And verses 23 to 26 of the same scripture. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, come on now, that the Lord Jesus, come on now, that the Lord Jesus, oh praise the name of the Lord, oh praise the name of the Lord, oh glory be to the name of the Lord, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me, after the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying that this cup is a new testament in my blood, this do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say something about foot washing because there's quite a few churches, in fact, a lot of them now, that don't do any foot washing at all. Yes. And you can see that we can see that the church is going, moving further and further and further away from gospel truth. Gospel truth. And, and they say, well, what's the purpose of, of me taking off my socks and somebody washing my feet in a in a Christian in a in a in a in a hall? And they say, I can't see the saints in it. But it's an ordinance that God has laid down because it's teaching us, you know, what is generally the most smelly part of a person's body is normally the feet because they're in shoes particularly if it's hot and sweaty and they can sweat and the socks are dirty <laughs> and if you're living in um, a desert area where you walk through a lot of dust and so forth every day your feet will also be full of mud and dirt and even like more so if you walk barefoot but in those countries or communities where you don't wear shoes at all or in sandals at all your feet are very dirty Jesus is saying wash people's feet get down on your hands and knees and wash somebody's feet he's saying listen I am teaching you how to be humble Jesus tried to show us that as Christians, we're not here to serve ourselves. We're here to serve others and to meet the needs of others. Amen? Amen. And, and I'm serious, dead serious about this. Now, I wouldn't tell you to do anything that I don't practice, pre that I don't preach myself. I, 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 you know, I, I, during the week, I, I met a young lady who was very, very, very distraught because under the current system, all of her welfare benefits have been stopped, she's been suspended. And she's got children to look after, and she had nothing in her pocket. Nothing. She was really, really down, and nothing to think. And, you know, I just took out my pocket and I threw 20 pounds, I said, in front of her, take that, that's yours. I'm not looking for it. You know, because you've got to understand, as Christians, we are not here to serve ourselves. We are here to serve others. That's the gospel. And that was Je that is what Jesus Christ is teaching us when he's showing us the ordinance of foot washing. And particularly as we live in these very austere times and difficult times where there's going to be a lot of people, especially mothers, yes. especially mothers, single moms with children. There's going to be a lot of them crying about yes. and saying, look, I've got nothing. My benefits have been suspended. The cuts have come and I've got nothing to eat. I can't pay my gas. I can't pay my electricity. I can't clothe and feed myself. I'm going without food. God would expect us as Christians that are unable to do so to open our hands and to give to those who have a need. You know, we got to start as Christians to practice what we preach. Hence, Jesus inaugurated and put into practice the ordinance of foot washing, meaning stoop down to the lowest level to help someone who has a need. Oh, come on now. Continue. Question number seven. When was this first instituted? Oh, hallelujah. The question was, when was it first instituted? Uh, Brother Mark, yes, I, I've seen your text I, and I'm pleased to know that you're listening, Brother Mark. Um, I'm asking you, Brother Mark, please do phone in to the station later on. Please do phone in, Brother Mark, to the station later on. Thank you for your text about your liking. and uh, that, that is just good. You like the teaching. Praise the name of the Lord. Please do talk, phone in later on when we, after the teaching. Go ahead, please. Question Go number in. seven once more. Yeah. When was this first? Institute. So when was the Lord's Supper and foot washing first instituted? 1 right. Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23. That's 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 23. And it reads, 
For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which, hallelujah, that the Lord Jesus, the same night, oh praise the name of the Lord, in which he was betrayed, took bread. Then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover, that we may eat. Oh, hallelujah. Also, hallelujah, Luke 23, verse 7 and 8. And it reads, And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you, before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof, until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Oh, hallelujah. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. So Jesus is not going to drink any more grape juice. He, he's not going to drink it again until the church has been caught up to meet him. Until in the new kingdom on earth, he's, re, he's holding back the celebration and waiting until all his people come together and then we'll all drink the fruit of the vine, to grow vine together. Oh, hallelujah. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. So we can see that the Lord's Supper and foot washing was instituted the night Jesus Christ was to be betrayed. Yeah. About 24 hours before he was crucified. About a day before he instituted foot washing and the Lord's Supper to show us to show us his love for us and to bring us, to teach us just as he came to earth to serve, that we have to serve and help one another. Oh, come with me now. Go ahead now. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Number eight. Yes. Did Jesus call this the Lord's Supper or the Passover? A good question. Did Jesus call this the Lord's Supper or the Passover? Luke 22, verses 8 and 15. And it reads, And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare for prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And verse 15, And he said unto them, With desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Oh, hallelujah! Passover! I remember when the blood was sprinkled on the doorposts of the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. And God knew that an angel was going to pass over and that Passover was going to bring about the deliverance of the children of Israel. The angel will pass over and smite the elders of all males in the Egyptian family. And that Passover was going to bring the release of God's people. It was going to destroy the, that Passover that the Lord did there was going to destroy the works of Pharaoh and cause him to have to release the people of God. And this Passover, the eating of the flesh of Jesus and drinking his blood destroys the works of the air of the Satan. It's the Lord's pastor, pastor. It delivers you from the iron grip of Satan. It brings you the victory. There is power in the blood and body of Christ. There is power in the Lord's Passover. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, glory be to God. Somebody say amen. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. There is power in the blood. There is power in the in those symbolic bread and wine. There is power. Because as we eat the Passover, it's the Passover in the land of Egypt that destroyed the work of Satan. And made the way for the children of God to get out of the iron grip of the Pharaoh and their leaders at that time. And it's the Lord's Passover or the Lord's Supper that we take once a year that will deliver us and give us power for another year to escape out of the 
iron grips and out of our clutches of Satan and to give us the victory out of us Satan. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. And the Lord's Passover is also like a seal on our body. It's a seal. So that when the Lord comes to visit the land with destruction and with plagues, when the Lord sees his Passover, his bread and his wine and the doorpost of your spirit, my son, when the Lord sees the wine in your stomach, that you've taken the emblem, the Lord, the, 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 the destroyer will pass over you and not suffer you to suffer harm. Come on now. Wonderful. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Question number nine. Praise the Lord. How often was the Jewish Passover celebrated? How often? Because you've got to remember the Lord's Supper is coming over. It, 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 it was transferred to the, the, the Passover was transferred to the Lord's Supper. You hear that? So the Passover was transferred or, or superseded by superseded with the Lord's Supper. So the Lord's Supper superseded the the the, the, uh, the Passover. So 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 Hallelujah. So so when was it? Oh Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. How often was the Jewish Passover celebrated? Exodus thirteen and verse ten, and it reads as follows: Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in this season. From year to year. So in his season. So there's a season for it. In his season. From year to year. And okay, let's continue on here. Oh hallelujah. <laughs> Question number 10. When was it celebrated? Deuteronomy 16 and verse 6. King James Version Bible. Deuteronomy 16 6. Verse 6. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. To place his name. In there thou shalt sacrifice the parcel back even at the going down of the sun at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt and Exodus 12 verse 6 and ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall eat it shall kill it in the evening Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I want to just uh, emphasize something here. Now, note, just note, I want mean, you to note this and do this and note this. The Passover lamb was killed in the evening, quote. Or between the two evenings. According to Jewish reckoning, between the two evenings is from 12 o'clock until noon, on, from 12 o'clock noon until nightfall. See the Jewish Encyclopedia, Volume 9, pages 553. See the Jewish Encyclopedia, Volume 9, page 553. If you want to find out more about the Jewish Passover and how they kept it. Now, Bible times was reckoned on the bet. Now, the, a lot of these encyclopedias are now online. If you go to Google Books, you'll get them all there. Um, okay. Now, um, uh, Bible times was reckoned on the basis of four watches. So the ba a Bible day or Bible times were reckoned on the basis of four watches. So you have the watch in the night, which you can find in Matthew 14, 25. The night watch, Matthew 14, 25. Um, and in the fourth watch of the night, and I'm going to read that, and it reads, and it, Matthew 14, 25, that's the night watch. And it says, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Yeah? And and twelve hours in the day, the mother watch, John eleven nine. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walk in the day he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of the world. The first hour of the day would correspond to our six o'clock in the morning. That's it that's in Israel. It's Israeli time. The first hour of the day will correspond to our, that's in their, in, in their, how they work it biblically, correspond to our six o'clock in the morning. Matthew 20 verses 3 to 6, um, Jesus died the ninth hour of the day, that's it, you can find that in Matthew 27, 45 or 46, which is 3 p.m. our time, yes, which is 3 p.m. our time, and was also, yes, and was also, the time of day that the Passover lamb was slain. The Passover lamb was slain about 3 p.m. 
that particular day. Bearing in mind that the Jews used a lunar calendar, um, they didn't use clocks and things like what we have now. They used the, the sun, the moon, the, well, the moon really to give them the, the hours of the day. You know, and, and, and like what do you call them? Dial, sun dial, and stuff like okay, that. That's yeah. what they actually yeah. use to yeah. measure time. Okay, let's continue on. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Question number eleven. Who now is our Passover land? First Corinthians five verse seven. First Corinthians five. No, who now is our Passover land? No, no. Who now? Who now is our Passover land? Yes. First Corinthians five seven. It reads, "Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sanctified for us." So here it is. Purge out therefore the old leaven, the old leaven means sin, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So Jesus Christ has now become our sacrificial lamb. Or in other words, as John introduced him, the lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, which has taken away the sin of the, of the world. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's continue. Question number 12. What is the Lord's Passover, in brackets, Lord's Supper, a memorial of? First Corinthians 11, 26. And it reads, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till it comes. So it shows so the Passover, or the Lord's Supper, the eating of the, the bread and the drinking of the wine, uh, reminds us of, of reminds us of the body of Christ that was sacrificed for us and his blood that was shed in our place because it should have been me or you on that cross being crucified but Jesus went there and took upon him our sins in fact he took upon us the sins of the whole world so when we take and administer and take the Lord's Supper we are remembering and showing reverence to the death and the suffering that Jesus Christ we're remembering that we are not our own and that Jesus has purchased us with his redeeming blood. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Question 13. How often should it be observed? This is an interesting question. How often should the Lord's pastor be observed? Yeah? Yeah. It says, how often, how often should the Lord's Supper be observed? How often should the Lord's Supper be observed? Um, praise the name of the Lord. Now that's a good question because some people observe. I think some churches observe the Lord's Supper, yeah, every single day. Um, you know, there's a supper going on, so people can come in. Some churches are open, yeah. Some churches are open 24 hours a day, day and night, yeah, yeah. And people actually observe them. People actually observe. You know, we we'll take the Lord's Supper every day. Some churches take it every week. Every week you can go and take yeah. communion. Some churches could take it several times a day because there are churches like in the city of London, like like in the city of London or in Westminster. There are churches, there's a church that's open 24 hours, day and night. I think it's Westminster Cathedral. Yeah. And you could go and take Lord's Supper there 10 times a day if you want. Yeah? yeah. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Come with me now, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then some churches take it once a week. Some churches take it once a month. Some churches take it once every two or once every three months. Some churches take it once every six months. Some churches take it once a year. But yeah, the question is asking, how often should it be observed? Exodus 13 verse 10. And it reads, here it is. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. So there's a specific time period or specific time where this Passover, where the Lord's Supper is supposed to be kept commensurate or in line with or timed with the time that Jesus, our sacrifice, sacrificial lamb, our Passover lamb was sacrificed for us. Also, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, and it reads as, following, as follows. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, hallelujah, took bread, <clears throat> and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had supped, 
saying, this cup is a new testament, hallelujah, in my blood, this do ye, as often as ye drink it, in remembrance of me, hallelujah, for as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come, so the question is, how often should the Lord's supper be observed, five times a day? Once a day, once a week, once every two weeks, once a month. How often? Well, I believe, let's hear what, what it was saying. The word often, as used here, means a yearly observance. As the high priest went often, come on now, into the most holy place, you'll find that in Hebrews 9, 24 to 26, it gives the time of the Lord's Supper, how often we should keep it, when we should keep it. It's in Hebrews 9, 24 to 26, yeah? As the high priest went often into the holy place, which was once a year, the celebration of any person's birthday or great event is kept yearly at the proper time. So we should, with Christ's death, and so should, and so should we, in, in, in commemorating or remembering Christ's death. Otherwise it loses its meaning. You understand? Mm -hmm. You know, if you eat a good pie too often, it doesn't become a pie after a while. <laughs> it becomes steak. It becomes something you're so tired of you don't want to use. It loses it, 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 its effectiveness, <laughs> its meaning. You understand? So if you're celebrating a birthday, you celebrate at the time of year. If you're commemorating someone's death, you commemorate at the time that they die. Yes. Come yes. on now. Yes. So as a priest, Hallelujah. Went into the most holy place once a year. The high priest went there often, but it was once a year. To make the sacrifice of the sin of the land. Even as Jesus only once in that particular year died and shed his blood for the world. He did it once. And died once. You know, the Lord's Supper is actually showing the Lord's death until he comes. Come on now. Jesus didn't die two, three, four, five, or six times or every time or every single week. He died once in that year. We're commemor commemorating his death. So we commemorate the death of the Lord at the time he actually died. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Let's continue. Thank you. Question number 14. Yes, yes. At what time of the day should it be observed? At what time of the day should it be observed? observed? Now these are deep teachings. I'm taking you to deep water here. So when you just stay and listen, because you see, we can all gather and learn. We learn yes. from each other. And that. everyone's got something that they can offer. So we, we learn from you, you learn from us. It works both ways. And a two-fold, three-fold cord is not easily broken. Yes. We're at according to scripture. Yes. So we're all reliant on each other. So we must... Uh, anyway, at what time of the day should it be taken? Matthew 26, 20. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. He did it in the evening. Because it was an evening meal. It was an evening meal. The Lord's Supper it was a meal. The yes. evening meal. Yes? yes? And also 1 Corinthians 11, 23. Yes, For I have received <coughs> of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, I love the saying, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus, I love that saying, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. He did, they did it, as a, it was like a parting meal, a goodbye meal. He was sitting down having the disciples. And as part of that meal, he also was their feet to show them how much he loved them. That look, even though I am the greatest and I'm greater than you, I love you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm a creator, I'm God of heaven and earth, that I'm stupid now to wash your feet. And you know, when I think about this, in, in our society there are so many class wars. If you have money, if you don't have money, people, generally in our secular world, people who have money generally gain the respect of others. That's right. Well, people who can do something yes. mighty. Yes. But Jesus has every single thing, he's God, he's creator of all things, but yet he stooped down, bowed down, put an apron upon himself and took up a towel and started to go around washing his disciples' feet. Washing his their feet. You see? Yes. So, we, we, as far as Jesus Christ is concerned, there is no such thing as classism. And I want to tell you, one of the most evils of this world, one of the most evil things of this world is classism. Where one individual thinks they're better than another That's individual. Correct. And it's a great sin. Right, exactly right. Because great. if Jesus Christ 
himself. Come on now. Ooh. If Jesus Christ, come on now. You're preaching. You're preaching. Come on, preacher. You're preaching. Come on, you're preaching, preacher. Yes. If Jesus Christ, who created the heavens and the earth, who he rightfully has his crown with many crowns, who wears around his loins a golden girdle, a golden girdle around his paps. And I don't name that normal name, but he's the King of Kings, a Lord of Lords. If he can bow down and cut a cross classism, what about me and you? Christians have no right to see class. Or to think I am better than you, so don't come near me. If Jesus Christ, the God of glory, could stoop down and wash my deck, tell me something, if you get if God Almighty appeared in this room now, Brother Hill, I and he said, Take up your trust, I'm gonna wash your feet, would you allow him to do it? You would. I would. I would be terrified. I would be terrified I would because be I would. I would be absolutely terrified. So I'm thinking, Lord, you. I probably react like Peter. Yes, yes. The yes, Lord, yes. how can you wash my feet? Peter had the revelation that Jesus Christ is God. Jesus said to his disciples, "Who do men say that I am?" And some said, "Some say you are a prophet. Some say you are Elias." Some say you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead, which I thought. He said, yes, but who do you, who do you, I don't know who you say that I am. And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Peter understood that Jesus Christ was God. So Peter had that revelation. And you see, Jesus said to Peter, and upon this rock, Will, oh, yeah. will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it Jesus is the rock you see so Peter knew was God Emmanuel God with us he had realized our 53 Emmanuel God with us full of grace and truth amen oh, man. I want to tell you something so when Jesus tells Peter to take off his shoes take his socks off because he's going to wash his, watch his feet. Of course Peter's going to react in that way. Because he can't understand how God Almighty, the Creator, is going to wash his humble feet. God is a scientist plus. God is plus, 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 plus. How he, he can only that no, he's, he's, he's almost like he's been insulted and insulted Peter for God to wash his feet. But Jesus said, listen, there's something going on that, Peter. You don't see things the way I see things. You don't view things the way I view things. My thoughts are not your, your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. So Peter, if you don't do this, you have no part or lot with right. me. Yes. God was right. teaching us humanity. One of the greatest sins of all time, which many, many people are going to be guilty of, I'm going to be chastised. You know, many people will not make heaven because of this thing of, of pride. It's called pride mm -hmm. and class wars. You know, many times, I've heard so many times where a woman is dating a man or a man is dating a woman. And you know, somebody will say, you know, that man or that woman is not good enough for the man or that man is not good enough for the woman. Who tells you that the woman is not good enough for the man? Who tells you that a man is not good enough for the woman? If Jesus Christ is, was willing to come down to wash paupers' feet, because Peter and them were paupers, they had their own employed people. They left their jobs to follow those who were unemployed. They, they had to get money out of, they were so poor that they had to take money out of a fish's mouth to survive, to pay the taxes. Now, if Jesus Christ, could wash people's feet like that and die for them and eat with them, drink with them. And we are the bride of Christ. Then how can anybody say that their son or their daughter is too good for X or Y? It's sin! It's classism! And God takes these things very, very seriously. You know, it's almost blasphemy. And this is what, one of the things that people will be dying and going to hell for is classism. Let's move on. Praise the name of the Lord. Question number 15. Yeah. On what night in relation to the Jewish Passover did the Lord institute the Lord's Supper? In fact, in fact, hold on. The reason the New Testament Passover, I want to just cover this. Yeah. Now, the reason the New Testament Passover is called the Lord's Supper is because it was observed at supper time, the time when they normally had their meal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It was not the Lord's breakfast or the Lord's dinner, as some people observe it in the morning. 
So, so if it's absorbed in the morning, it can't be a supper because it's the Lord's Supper. Yeah. So you don't have a supper. Supper's before you go to bed at night. You don't have your supper after you get up from breakfast. And you don't have it. Your, 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 your supper in the middle of the day. Or, you know, you have your supper at supper time. Or oh, praise the name of the Lord. Continue on. Question number 15. On what night in relation to the Jewish Passover did the Lord institute the Lord's Supper? 1 Corinthians 11.23 For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, I love that, see, I just love it, that the Lord Jesus, I love that. The same night in which he was betrayed took bread. Now let me just point out here, no. Bible evidence is that Jesus was betrayed the night before the Passover lamb was slain. The Jews had not yet eaten the Passover lamb. John 18, 28, identify, we'll show you that. When Jesus was to be tried and condemned to die. But Jesus had already eaten the Passover supper with his disciples, his farewell meal, and deliver actual fact. That was the day in which the Zealots kept their, their Passover. They kept it one day before the Jews kept it, the Zealots, but it's another Jewish sect. But Jesus had already eaten the Passover supper with the disciples. So, then since Paul says that we are to observe this ordinance, the same night that Jesus was betrayed, was betrayed, the proper time to keep it would be at the beginning of the 14th of Nisan or Abib. This is Hebrew words, which is March, April. And is after sun and is after sunset of the 13th. The Jewish religious year began in the spring. The first month, Nisan, or Abib, which is March or April, corresponds to our la later part of April, or in some cases, the first part of so to, to, to the latter part of March. I do apologize. In some cases, the first part of April. The Jewish months were regulated by the moon, the lunar month. The first month beginning after the new moon followed the vernal equinox. See, Jew, I, like to, I like to refer you there, reference you there to the Jewish Encyclopedia of Art calendar. Again, you get it, uh, all of these in Google Books. So the way to determine the time to observe the Lord's Supper is to locate the first new moon after the vernal equinox. That's if you want to do it at the exact time and exact day that the Lord wants us to do it. Which is the day following, the day following will be the first day of Nisan, um, the 13th day after the sunset, will be the proper time for the Lord's Supper, basing it on the time that the Lord Jesus Christ died. Remember at that time, enough clocks like what we had, they used sundials, etc., etc., etc. Church history proves that the early Christians continued to observe the Lord's Supper once a year, and was reckoned by the time the Jews had their Passover. Yeah? It was the apostate church that introduced the idea of having it more often and commercialized it like an Easter, Easter bunny, Easter rabbit, Easter egg, Easter baby, Easter this, Easter hat, Easter cat. Yeah? Many, uh, that's the commercializing of it. Many Protestants are following the traditions of the church. But God wants us to be guided by the word of the Lord only. God bless you. Pastor Lake signing out. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord.